Hello everyone and welcome to the TFB TV review and burndown of the brand new Mossberg 940 Tactical, which is going to be released tomorrow. I'm giving you a sneak preview and a torture test today, but Hop's video from the Mossberg 940 event at Gunsight will be published tomorrow morning on our little brother channel, TFB TV Showtime, so make sure you go over there, subscribe, and see Hop's more thorough video. I feel the same way about semi-automatic shotguns as I do magnified rifle optics. That is, if you spend less than $1,000, odds are better that you're just pissing money away instead of getting something worth holding on to. Buy once, cry once, and all that stuff. Everything that's said on a daily basis to justify nearly anything on the HKPro.com forums. The Mossberg 930 was a bit of an exception to the rule because you could find entry-level tactical models in the $700-ish dollar range, but these are still reliable shotguns, but they're not perfect. There's a big asterisk next to that, the word reliable, because the Mossberg 930 is reliable, but truly only so long as it's regularly maintained. After you shoot a few hundred shells through it, then you should probably get it cleaned or you're going to have cycling issues. According to the manual from Mossberg, you should clean every 200 rounds or fewer, but that's a, a pretty conservative number. I've read reviews online that say you can get away with about six or 700 rounds without cleaning the gun, but after that, the 930 is going to need to be cleaned. The bottom line is that the 930 is a reliable autoloader and even the basis for my tactical Uncle Clint Smith's Thunder Ranch semi-auto shotgun but that's if you regularly maintain it myself. I never bought a 930 because I'm lazy trash and I don't like owning guns that I have to clean after every range visit to keep them running. So that's why shotguns like the Beretta 1301 are so appealing to me. Self-cleaning gas systems are a must. For that matter, the only two semi-automatic tactical shotguns I own have self-cleaning systems. You have the Benelli M4 with the Argo gas system and the Beretta 1301 with the Blink gas system. But now, I've got a third semi-auto shotgun in the safe because the Mossberg 940 Tactical is going to be released tomorrow and it will be the best tactical semi-auto shotgun you can get for under $1,000. MSRP is going to be $1,120 but you should certainly see this gun in maybe the $900 range or even less in the coming weeks. Now gather around for story time about how the Mossberg 940 came to be. There's a little known professional shooter in this business. He goes by the name of Jerry Michalek. I'm not making that up, stick with me. I know it's a funny sounding name, like a Harry Potter wizard or something, but he's a real person. Of course, I'm kidding, you guys all know Jerry. He's one of the most talented and likable shooters in the game right now and possibly an actual wizard, but Jerry is on Team Mossberg, and apparently Mossberg noticed at different events that they would go to, Jerry would have a 930 with him, that he had made some custom modifications to in his garage to make it more effective for competition, including widening and beveling the loading port to make quad loading easier, and tweaking the controls. Apparently, Mossberg was already kind of considering updating the 930, so they said, hey Jerry, what do you think we should do if we were to upgrade the 930? So they worked with Jerry on the 940 in addition to the beveled and widened loading port that Jerry already kind of modified on the 930. The 940 got a pinch-free shell elevator and can we just start calling those shell elevators already by the way? Plus an oversized knurled charging handle and a mandatory feature for tack reloads, a large bolt release. The first version I saw the 940 had the same release as the 940 JM Pro which is a competition model model. But the one on the tactical is a little bit more streamlined, which I think is the right call for a tactical shotgun, where slings and gear are going to be present. It comes with a bunch of shims for an adjustable length of pull of up to, I want to say, 1.75 inches. It will, of course, be Mossberg AccuChoke compatible, which also means it's got a threaded barrel, which also means you can equip it with a Silencer Co. Salvo shotgun suppressor if you'd like to pick one up from Silencer Shop. It'll also have a barrel clamp with a sling swivel and left and right M-lock ports. This is a nice feature right out of the box because third-party options are either cheap pieces of shit 
are really expensive and hard to find. Side note, I'd like to see Mossberg offer this as an aluminum option. The one you get is plastic, which is fine, but I'd love to be able to purchase a more expensive metal version if I feel the need for additional durability. You get a high visibility fiber optic front sight as standard as well. Perhaps my favorite feature is the built-in micro red dot cut. It's built for the Shield RMSC footprint, which is compatible with Holosun's micro optics. I'm not allowed to name any names here, but, and this is kind of a surprise, Mossberg said that the Chinese made Holosun micro red dots tended to handle working on a shotgun better than just about anything else that they tried. Other optics couldn't handle the abuse of being mounted on top of a 12 gauge or being dropped because part of Mossberg's evaluation of the 940 was a rigorous drop testing routine done on bare concrete. So not only is the Mossberg robust enough to handle repeated drops on concrete, but according to them, the Holosun took some hard shots to the chin and kept working. But why didn't anyone think of this sooner? It's brilliant. Cut a little footprint into the receiver of a shotgun. I'm actually amazed. In the meantime, I've got to spend hundreds of dollars on an Airtis Industries mount if I want something similar on my 1301, but it comes with the cost of the new Mossberg, totally free. I highly recommend going with the 507K so you can get the multi-reticle. The 407 is great for pistols with the single dot, but for me, like spending another, what is it, like a hundred bucks or something to go between the red and green EOTech like donut of death is worth a few extra bucks on a shotgun. Of course, in addition to the performance upgrades that Jerry suggested, the most important upgrade from the 930 to the 940 is by far the updated gas system. I mentioned previously the 930 gas system was not quite self-cleaning, but Mossberg wanted to add a self-cleaning system as a feature for their next generation shotgun, and that's what they did with the 940. It doesn't have a cool acronym yet, but the 940 gas system is much different and much faster than the 930. First, you start with a nickel boron coated gas piston, magazine tube, hammer, sear, meaning everything's going to be nice and slick internally. I don't want to get into the weeds on this, but this little cheese grater looking thing is a stepped and vented corrosion resistant spacer, which prevents carbon buildup and moisture buildup in the area of the mag tube, hosting the gas system. Again, that's going to lead to smoother operation. The 940 is going to be rated for three inch shells and it kind of goes without saying, but mini shells do not cycle. It's running those paper holes. Let's see, we got a little baby mini shell. It is not going to run a mini shell. I'm not going to hold it against it if it doesn't because a gun like this, you want to have a little bit more robust recoil mechanism where it's not going to cycle mini shells. Yeah, yeah, didn't think so. Not the little fella. I guess I'd be more concerned if they did cycle, to be honest. This gun will give you a 7 plus 1 capacity with standard 2.75 inch shells under the 18 and a half inch barrel, and you get a length of pull of 12 and a half inches to 14 and a quarter, meaning that this is a handy shotgun with a high capacity. It'll weigh 7 and a half pounds, a little bit lighter than the Benelli M4, but a pound heavier than the lightweight Beretta 1301. Mossberg said that they torture tested the shit out of this 940 to make sure that the gas operating system was all that they hoped it to be, and it turns out it is. While Mossberg suggests cleaning the shotgun every 1,500 rounds, this isn't so much to do with reliability as it is with future maintenance. What I mean is after 1,512 gauge shells, the gun's dirtier than my college dorm room, and there's so much powder and carbon buildup in the 940 that while it's still perfectly functional, it might get so varnished with carbon fouling that it'll be difficult to disassemble for maintenance thus the 1500 round maintenance suggestion. That's a point I want to clarify because when I saw Mossberg's literature, like their ads about the 940, I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm glad it's more reliable, but I still have to clean it every 1500 rounds or so for it to work, right? That's not the case. They just want to make sure that you don't cement your gun shut through pure negligence and or ineptitude. So even though technically you don't have to, clean it every 1500 rounds, all right? At first, the vision for the 940 was a competition shotgun. And of course, with old Jerry at the helm, you knew that they were gonna succeed with that goal. Secondarily, Mossberg considered the gun as an excellent waterfowl hunting option because of the increased reliability, resistance to corrosion and hazardous environments. Well, at least hazardous for, for shotguns and and I guess ducks too, it seemed like it only made sense to introduce a version or several versions for hunting as well. That's why the first version of the gun was the 940 JM Pro, I think, which was a competition model. Then they introduced the waterfowl model, the turkey model, and the field model. It didn't take too much in terms of mental gymnastics for someone to figure out, well, 
Don't all these features make it a good tactical shotgun? It's fast shooting, that's great. Easy to manipulate controls, increased reliability, an enlarged loading port, the means to attach an optic. It's a no-brainer for tactical application. Reliability is, of course, critical for a tactical shotgun, as is the ability to make rapid follow-up shots with minimum recoil. The micro red dot mounting option, obviously a huge plus, and the ability to both load, charge, and manipulate your firearm without devoting your undivided attention to that task, especially under stress, it's ideal. You might not be quad loading from a competition shell holder, but the beveled loading port does make it easy to administratively reload even in dim conditions. It just makes sense to have a tactical version, so Mossberg obliged us. As I said, Mossberg's manual says the 930 should be cleaned every 200 rounds, but they say the 940 can go for seven and a half times that without breaking a sweat. Of course, as much as I love the guys at Mossberg, I'm not going to take their word for it. We want to see it to believe it. There's no better way to introduce the 940 Tactical than with a good old-fashioned TFB TV 500 round burn down in the swamp of South Louisiana. If you aren't familiar, we fire 500 rounds of random assorted 12 gauge of all types through a shotgun as fast as we can possibly load it. This puts a lot of stress on the shotgun and it additionally gives you an idea if it can cycle with high brass, with low brass, as well as how it handles recoil and fouling. I'm not sure it's a perfect shotgun test, but it's effing brutal and a whole barrel of fun, but also a bitch for your face and your shoulder. If you've watched us perform this test before, you know that we've killed at least two shotguns with this method. Mossberg's no stranger to the TFB TV torture test because their 200 ish dollar budget pump shotgun, the Maverick 88, aced the burn down only a few months ago. For this test, we used birdshot, buckshot, BB shot, even three inch magnum slugs. We had new production ammunition, old production ammunition as well, including even old school paper hole 12 gauge shotgun shells made 50 years ago, which almost never cycle in semi-automatics. Oh, and even some three and a half inch shells. Funny thing about that, as I said, this gun's not rated for three and a half inch shells, but we'll just talk about that part of the test later. I kicked the test off with trying to fire a full tube as fast as I could pull the trigger and it was hilariously fast. Holy shit! <laughs> For one second, I almost felt like God or Jerry Michalek with a shotgun. I guess they might be the same person, I don't know, but I rode the lightning and it felt good. The 940 runs like Usain Bolt on PCP. It's a great single stage trigger, that's right at four and a half to five pounds on the shotgun. So we kick the test off and here's what happened. You hoes know the drill already. 500 rounds of random shit. We've got the bio ammo that I'm gonna talk about in this video. We've got like old school Winchester. We've got slugs, we've got sabots. We've got, we even have some old paper hole shit. We got minis. Um, yeah, paper hole shotgun shells, like old, old, 50, 60 years old. I don't expect it to run in this shotgun, but uh, you know, who knows what's gonna happen, but we have 500 rounds of everything from weak birdshot and mini shells all the way up to three inch magnums and slugs. 500 round shotgun burn down, commence. <laughs> Another box, done. Let's keep it rolling. God, it is, this thing is so hot, I feel it through the hand goes. Let's get down to business. Three inch Magnum steel shot waterfowl loads. Let's go. Oh shit, did you catch that? <laughs> We're 
We're finishing up the 500 round test right now. So far, so good. Ryan and I are going to put the kibosh on this thing with 10 rounds of Rottweil three inch Magnum slugs. And then that is it. If this gun does it, it's past the test. God, look at that steel target, man. This ship packs a wallop. <laughs> you killed it. Ryan, quit fucking around. These no -seums are killing me. This guy's gonna fucking murder us when he sees this shit. We need to pick this up and get out of here, man. I mentioned that like most tactical shotguns, the 940 is rated for three inch shells. Unfortunately, a couple of three and a half inch magnums worked their way into the shell box, meaning that they worked their way into the shot tube and Ryan fired one of them. There it went. Gotta get the pliers. Well, I guess a testament to the 940, Ryan's dumbass just ran a three and a half inch Magnum. This gun's only rated for threes, so we're gonna have to take a little time out because as you can see, it does not want to come out and I don't blame it, but the shotgun took it just fine. Uh, this was interesting because of course, anytime somebody fires a round that's too big for a gun, it's always interesting, but We've killed a couple of Turkish shotguns during this test with regular three inch Magnum rounds and you almost feel it when it hits the action. It's kind of like a good right cross. Sure enough, something will slip out of place, something will break or something will just flat out fall off of the shotgun after you put a few three inch mags through it, but not the 940. After digesting multiple helpings of three inch Magnums and even Magnum slugs, the only issue we had with it after we accidentally shot a three and a half was that the ejection port simply wasn't large enough to extract the spent hole. So we get the pliers out, we remove the hole, we kept going like nothing happened. It was like shotgun operation. We had 500 rounds of assorted ammo without a hiccup, actually even running the paper shells. So now we've got a tube with four or five paper hole shells in it. Let's see if this actually runs them. That'd be kind of cool. God damn, it sure did. That's amazing. The only issues we ran into were the bolt release kind of working itself a little bit loose and the follower in the mag tube getting hung up a couple of times. But Mossberg told us that this was going to happen with this prototype because the bolt release was just a 3D printed button installed for this test and the mag tube was a two piece kind of slapped together to get a working prototype out to me. Mossberg says the production version will have an anti-rotation bolt release and a single piece tube, so neither should be an issue. Assuming that to be the case, I can say the Mossberg 940 delivered as promised during the torture test. Accuracy at 50 yards was excellent with the Holo Sun. Follow-up shots were easy because it's a light shooting gun. Loading was easy. Recoil was soft, especially considering, you know, this is a middleweight gun that clocks in at seven and a half pounds, just under the nearly eight pound Benelli M4. Controls were intuitive to manipulate. And like I said, the gun cycled everything we put through it. Everybody's favorite party game, which is it, birdshot or slugs? We've got a mixed fanny pack of birdshot and slugs. This is gonna suck, let's do it. God, this shotgun actually handles all of them pretty well. That's a slug. Oh, that's not bad. Ryan and I were both extremely impressed. The bottom line is it looks like Mossberg is going to stand and deliver on its promises with the 940. The 930, yeah, it was a good budget semi-auto shotgun, but in my opinion, nowhere near up to the standard of my two Italian favorites, uh, the Benelli and the Beretta. The 940 makes things more interesting now. You've got a reliable shotgun. It's fast shooting, custom tuned by Jerry Mitch himself. That awesome micro red dot mount that's cut very low into the receiver, super low profile in a rig that's been torture tested by Mossberg and now TFB TV through the burn down. And you get all of this for under $1,000 street price. I think this is the only American tactical semi-auto shotgun worth a damn right now. And I say I've got a copy. That's kind of true, but the one I have is the prototype and it's got to go back to Mossberg. So I'm going to be in line with the rest of you guys tomorrow to see if I can get one at my local gun store. This is the best semi-automatic shotgun under $1,000 right now. Well, tomorrow, whatever, you get what I'm saying. Guys, thanks as usual for watching. Thank you to Mossberg for sending me this prototype to use in this video and letting me abuse the piss out of it. I guess, unfortunately, I've got to send it back now. 
Thank you, of course, to Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sports superstore. Thank you to Ventura Munitions for sending all the shotgun ammo that we used in this video, which was a lot. But thank you to you guys, as usual, for watching. It means a lot to us. Stay tuned and make sure to check out Hop's video on TFB TV Showtime tomorrow. Take care.